If you're interested in using ester synchronization and artificial insemination in your beef herd, it's first important to understand all the logistics involved in making a program like that work. So today we wanted to do a little Q&A. First, should you be using ester synchronization in the first place? The short answer is yes. Ester synchronization is a tool to add value to your program. However, how much value you can add from using ester synchronization will vary from operation to operation. Now, ester synchronization won't cover up poor management or make up for cows that are in extremely poor condition or poor health. So think of synchronization as an added boost and not as a crutch. Some ester synchronization protocols require handling animals two to three times. You will hear us sometimes talk about this as a number of trips through the chute. So consider your facilities and also the labor needed when choosing a protocol. You need to be able to do it safely and also reasonably efficiently. That brings us to the next question. How do you set up females for success in an ester synchronization program? Management strategies will vary between heifers and cows. First, let's talk about heifers. Heifers will need to be developed to 55 to 65% of the mature cow weight. This will help ensure that a large percentage of heifers will reach puberty by the start of the breeding season. Developing to a target weight isn't going to guarantee that heifers reach puberty though. So having a reproductive tract evaluation performed can be a really nice tool to identify directly those heifers that are cycling or not cycling. Having a reproductive tract score performed can provide that information and if less than half of those heifers are cycling, you know you may have some problems to address. In addition, pelvic measurement can be a great tool to identify those heifers that are fairly likely to have calving difficulty so that you can remove them from your development program. For cows, we are mainly thinking about their body condition, plan of nutrition, and how long it's been since calving. We need to manage cows so that they are at a body condition score of five or greater at breeding and gaining rather than losing weight. That positive plan of nutrition is really critical for fertility. Now remember, we're asking females to breed back essentially at a time in which they're at peak lactation. So we really need to meet their nutritional requirements. And that's especially true in the case of younger females that are also still growing. So if you're calving at a time in which forage is abundant, maybe this is less of a consideration, but certainly in systems in which you're calving a little bit out of sync with nature, you really need to be thinking about how to provide supplementation to those females and still meet their nutritional requirements. Another factor that really influences reproductive performance in cows is how long it's been since she's had her last calf, what we call her postpartum interval. In general, we wanna see cows at least averaging 45 days postpartum by the time of breeding. If you're using cedars, cows really ought to be at least 21 days after calving at the time of cedar insertion. You shouldn't expect really good results to an AI program in cows that are short postpartum, but it usually is still worth trying to get them jump started with synchronization. If deciding to start an ester synchronization protocol, of course, one of the first questions is, which ester synchronization protocol should I use? The question of which protocol to use is kind of a challenge because there's not really a one-size-fits-all protocol. It really depends on your specific goals and what you're trying to accomplish in your operation. Each protocol will vary in amount of cost and labor. For example, protocols that require heat detection may have lower drug costs but increased cost and labor associated with heat detection. Fixed-time AI protocols may have increased cost in drugs but decreased cost in labor. When choosing a synchronization protocol, you also need to think about whether you want AI to occur at one time on one day or whether you actually want it to be spread out over multiple days. If you're using an AI professional or a veterinarian to do your AI, you may find that they actually want you to have cows set up to breed in mass all on one day. It just simplifies the time and the labor associated with that project. But if you're doing some of the AI work yourself and maybe you aren't confident in your ability to get through large numbers on one day, you may actually prefer to have cows spread across multiple days and actually spread out that labor. There are other things to keep in mind when choosing the ester synchronization protocol. Some protocols may have advantages in certain situations over another. Every year, the Beef Reproduction Task Force publishes an updated list of protocols recommended for beef heifers and cows, either with heat detection or with timed AI or some combination of the two. You can find those pretty easily online, or they'll often be in the back of a bull stud catalog as well. Another great resource is the Ester Synchronization Planner, which can help you schedule out protocols for multiple groups of cows and have you uh, really have a plan going into the breeding season. And there are a few other factors to keep in mind as well. For example, vaccinating females too close to the start of the breeding season can actually interfere with their ability to get pregnant. Consult your veterinarian for the best health protocol for your operation. In general, we encourage you to have pre-breeding booster vaccinations administered to cattle at least 30 days prior to breeding. Another thing to consider is the movement of cattle after AI. If possible, try to have a plan in place so that you know where cattle need to be at and around the time of AI and after that point. If you can avoid trucking cattle, it's really advantageous to do so. 
we know we cause a little bit of embryonic loss when we do move cattle. And although there is this sweet spot of about two to five days after AI in which those losses are minimal from movement, it's still best to really avoid moving cattle at all if possible. We also want to be cognizant of changes in nutrition around the time of breeding or at AI. Changes in the nutritional management of cows or heifers during the breeding season can really be more detrimental than you might think. As one example, there was a paper out of South Dakota State University just a couple of years ago that moved heifers from a dry lot development system to a pasture immediately after AI. And the change in activity and also potentially the change in diet composition for those heifers really resulted in some reduced pregnancy rates. Heat stress in cattle before and after breeding can also result in reduced pregnancy rates. Breeding cattle in cooler times of the season and then cool of the morning or evening instead of mid-afternoon may help reduce heat stress. And of course, be especially cautious if you do need to move cattle during hot weather. Of course, that just scratches at the surface on the topic of estrus synchronization and artificial insemination. If you're interested in learning more about these and other reproductive technologies for beef cattle, hit that subscribe button if you're watching us on YouTube or follow our Facebook page, Mizzou Repro.